Um, my name's Jerome Leray. I'm the, the manager, director and founder of, uh, of InFarm. So we're an agricultural intelligence company and, and what we're best known for is our drone to tractor fallow weed solution. So I'm going to go through what that means, how it's actually applied in the field, a couple of um, trials or, or case studies I suppose, and then um, I can open up to, to a couple of questions on, on how you guys might apply this in your operation and how all that works. So in terms of fallow weeds, these are some of the assumptions that we have made. Um, so you're looking at two to five sprays depending on rainfall, um, and we're looking and expecting a $10 spray. Now there's a fair few farmers out there that says I don't have too many $10 sprays left, um, but that, that's what we're basically assuming. If you have more expensive sprays, then this is a, something that will, uh, will be even more beneficial. And we've been able to save up to 95% of chemical use. So something similar to the Weed It, um, but what we're doing is actually integrating with your self-propelled or your tow behinds if they, they're equipped with the right gear. So how does it work? Essentially what we do is we fly the paddock using a drone, we capture high definition images of the paddock, and then we upload that into our processing platform. From there we produce a weed map that can be integrated into your standard variable rate tractor via a USB. And then from there, that file will literally control the sections or nozzles, depending on how your system's plumbed, to basically turn it into a spot sprayer. It then means that basically, you have one tool to be able to do everything. Now I'm going to go through some of the different uh, the differences of optical sprayers versus um, this technology, because there are some trade-offs and considerations you guys will need to do. Now one of the biggest problems is covering the area. Australian farmers have some of the biggest hectares and our biggest problem is keeping up with you guys, especially if you've got a contractor going 30k an hour or whatever it is in the tractor. So what we did is just turn the sound down. Oh, no. no. What did you just press? <laughs> oh, I just pressed mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Righto, so what we did is we developed a, a VTOL drone. So VTOL means vertical takeoff and landing. It's a large scale UAV. Um, it gets rid of the requirements of having a runway if you've got a fixed wing and it is also more beneficial um, than say for example the standard copters that you've seen because they can cover more areas. Now this aircraft goes 100 kilometres an hour and we can cover about 500 hectares in four hours. So we're really starting to get to that point where we can keep up with you. Now unfortunately this aircraft um, met gravity. So one of the things that we, um, that we did is is it was developed um, in, in China, the aircraft design, and then also the autopilot was done in uh, Switzerland by an Australian. Now the problem with that aircraft was that the propeller system um, that helps it go up and down literally couldn't handle the Australian heat and we had a 45 degree day when we went and captured it. It overheated and um, yeah, gravity does the rest. Um, so right now it's not operational, but what it has allowed us to do is rethink how we're going to be able to cover those big areas. And just using your standard Phantom, which is like your little white drone that you've seen, and the new Mavic 2, um, which is a very, very small drone, we're covering up to 500 hectares a day for, for some of your bigger weeds. So it's something that's becoming really interesting and, and a tool that, that you guys might want to consider um, to, to combat your weeds. These are the tractors we've integrated with. So the John Deere with the seven sections, the individual nozzle control. Anyone, um, if anyone's thinking which is the best system, currently the, the Case IH with individual nozzle control is the most powerful system that's out there. Um, it's the one that I've seen the best. The second is the, the individual nozzle control by John Deere. and done a fair bit of work with, um, with Mick Kennedy, who's down in, um, in St. George. He's been really, really amazing at getting that up and running. We've also integrated with the section control and we've also had one that was a bit colourblind. A farmer decided to be difficult, had Goldacre sprayer, John Deere GPS and then Raven Plumbing out the back. Could integrate with it too. Um, so we haven't found one that we can't integrate with, um, but there are plenty of different uh, options that I'm sure we haven't tried yet. Now here's a bit of a case study. So this was done in Moree um, for a farmer that's just out of there. So he had um, some sorghum regrowth. Um, and now what we're doing is actually going to show you how the AI and what it looks like in the back end. So you've got your um, sorghum regrowth and what's white is, is sorghum and plants and what is um, black is not. So we can actually detect the plant to within about two centimetres um, in your paddock. So we can detect it um, extremely accurately and um, yeah, so if you actually look there, that plant there is pretty hard to see but, um, but the AI system was able to, to detect it. So 
So this farmer, um, this is what the actual spraying prescription looked like that went into his John Deere um, 2630 screen and he had uh, three sections out the back. Now one of the considerations is because the John Deere um, 2630 screen has seven so the system has seven sections, which means that in order when we detect the weed, we have to put like a safety buffer zone. Like what happens if the you know going over a contour bank, you get this rock and roll. Unlike the optical sprayers, who are basically detecting and spraying, we have to accommodate for some of those variations that you're going to have in your paddock. Now, in order to integrate with the John Deere system, we actually had to blow out the weed to about five metres. So it means if you had one weed, we had to spray about five metres around. Now that's not necessarily a problem if you're looking at pre-emergent sprays and you know where your weed populations are, but that's something to consider and he was only basically getting a 70% saving in his chemical. Now that's considerable, it was a $15 spray so that's what about 10 bucks a hectare saving, um, he was pretty happy. Now from the work that we did here, he literally went and got on the phone to his John Deere dealer and said hey, I need a new spray and I need that new individual nozzle control, it only come out two weeks earlier and he got on the blower and he goes, but your machine only has 200 hours. He goes, I don't give a shit. I've got, a lot, I've got 20,000 hectares. I'm going to pay that back really, really quickly. So he went and got and, and was one of the first people in Australia to, to go and get that machine. And now he's, um, he's getting about 95% chemical saving just by switching from seven sections to, to the individual nozzle control system. So in terms of our capacity, it says 500 hectares. Literally over the last two days I've been flying. We can now increase that to, to uh, 750 hectares a day for things that are bigger. So think of a tea plate um, when you're drinking tea, something about that size. Um, we can detect them and, and cover about 750 hectares. If you're looking for a two leaf stage grass, we have to go lower and we can only basically cover 150 hectares. So not, probably not the areas that are interesting for you guys um, to fit into your operation just yet. Now we are talking, um, we've got some test data out of Israel and we're looking to bring that camera here and that'll allow us to do um, about 6,800 hectares a day and potentially up to 30,000 hectares a day. So we're just trying to bring that, that technology here into Australia um, but as you can ex expect I don't have enough kidneys to pay for it yet so I've just got to try and sort that out. Um, in terms of our turnaround time, so we, you know, optical sprayers, they detect it, they spray it, um, it's done basically, the computation's done immediately. We've got to go and suck that data from the drone, process it, it's quite intensive, and then turn that around into basically a 25 meg file that you put into your, John, into your tractor. It takes about three hours, um, but we have just signed a deal with a large multinational um, hardware manufacturer, and we'll basically be doing a world first trial and allow us to do about four terabytes worth of data in near real time. Um, so we'll be able to basically deliver this the next morning. So you say, drone, I need you to get my fellow weeds. We go and do that, and the next morning you're out going and spraying. So these are the types of things that are coming up the pipeline, but we just don't have them, have them just yet. Now this is the question that I've been asked to, to answer. Um, if I'm a grower and I have my own $2,000 drone, can I send you the data for me for you to process and for me to deliver it? And the answer is yes. The problem is we're relying on Australia Post and by the time you give me the data the weeds have probably grown. Um, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a something that we're, we're looking to overcome with this large system that, um, that we're basically developing uh, with our international partners. So um, right now that, that's where we're at. If anyone has any questions, <coughs> what drone do you want to use? Um, you can contact myself. There's also Meg Cumro from Fly the Farm. She's also really experienced when it comes to drones. She can help advise what drones uh, you want. We have a lot of experience within our team. We can also help you there. Um, if you have any questions around artificial intelligence or that, um, that's something that's, that's right up our alley. Um, as I said, we're doing some work with uh, Microsoft at the moment. Um, and basically what we're doing is looking at Heresia cactus and feather top roads. How do we deploy and identify exactly where they are um, and we're the first commercial company to, to be partnering um, with Microsoft in that regard. So we've got them interested in, in your feather top problem and, um, and stay tuned because there's going to be some work um, that we're going to be basically deploying and, and, and enabling you guys to, to combat those weeds. Short and sweet but um, I suppose I'd like to open up to any questions. Time for a quick question. If there's uh, any burning ones, you can keep that one on one. Right. Um, how high are you flying a drone? 
So you're legally limited to 400 feet. Um, so depending on what size of weeds you're looking to target, so when you're doing, say, the, the 750 hectares, you're looking at it 400 feet. When you're looking to detect your smaller weeds, you're going to be flying lower, probably around the 70, 70 um, metres. But it, it also depends on what kind of camera system you've got mounted on there. So I'm talking about like your Phantom, your DGI products, which are your cheaper products. But there are systems out there that we can, we can get um, higher resolutions, basically. And how much is your drone worth? That big, that big one. Um, so it was fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The key word was. <laughs> we we can redevelop that um, and put new new equipment on there. We just think that with this new system that we're going to be having, it's going to allow us to to scale and, and map regions um, as compared to doing individual farms. So it'll help us scale and be up. You know, you guys will generally have rain at the same time, need to spray at the same time. So if we can map the entire region, provide you the system. Um, then you'll be able to deploy that into the paddock and it means that you won't be waiting on us to go and get the data and do all the rest of that. Yep. Yes. Yep. Oh, right, I think. Sorry, mate. Go ahead. Are you guys are you limited to um, seven sections or can you go to 11? No, listen, uh, th th that's just a problem with the tractor. So if you've got 11 sections, we can integrate with 11 sections. Um, what are you running? Yeah, right. So, so the seven sections is generally what's standard um, with the case or the the, um, the John Deere systems. So that's what we've integrated with. We have a client that had 14 sections. We can integrate with that. So it's basically limited to the solenoids. As long as they're mapped into your system, we can basically uh, hijack the system to to turn it into a spot sprayer. But I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, what's the long term plan? Are you do you see yourself as a feed for service? business or an analytics business? Really good question. We're an analytics platform. So the reality is there's not a system, so there's no contractors that are out there flying. Um, we want to partner with agronomy firms, potentially tractor manufacturers that would be doing um, the acquisition and then we would be doing the data processing. There are many, many more things. We did some work with, um, with the CRDC around disease detection. Um, for, for verticillium wilt in cotton. These are the types of things that we think our expertise is in, is, is being able to basically um, analyse and deliver the output that you guys need to plug into your systems to deal with whatever the problem is. Um, we're not a data acquisition platform. Um, we just need to solve that problem to get the product to you. Hang on, we've got uh, one wire in this side, Jordan. And I suppose just on that, I had, um, so these are some of the other things. So one of the byproducts that we have when we're mapping a region is being able to detect roos, get population of roos, parisia, cactus. We did a, a, something in WA where we were detecting skeleton weed. It'll quarantine your place. They're the types of things. The additional layers that as we're going out there, we're going to be able to do. So weed, weed species, size, um, diseases. Do you have a winter crop, summer crop, all the rest of it will be able to basically provide that analysis as, as we're mapping your region. Just fallow weeds is, is the, the first step for us. Yep. Yeah, just, just two questions. One, um, just in general, what's your uh, like, uh, say, uh, average fee for a average size farm just to get that layer back to the screen through USB? And two, do you see satellites getting to the point where they can overtake what you do, or essentially, or is there someone out there already who's going to do this um, like directly or like a lot quicker? Great question. Um, we're operating in a space that satellites can't do, not right now. So some of the best satellite images are at around about 10 to 15 centimetres, and we're talking mil spec there. Then there's some limitations, just physics with um, distortions of atmospheres and those types of things, meaning that they can't basically detect some of your smaller weeds, which is what you want. You, you don't want to wait till they're a big feather top to, to go and get them. So there are some physical limitations with satellites. So it either needs to be done through, through an optical sprayer on the ground or it needs to be done um, in something that's a bit closer to the ground, not in satellites or low orbiting satellites or anything like that. Um, in terms of the service right now, it's $3 a hectare um, plus travel. We're based in Gundy right now, but if there's someone up here who wants to provide the, you know, the aerial acquisition and that, we're, we're happy to talk because we think there's a huge opportunity. But $3 a hectare, 70% saving, on three dollars means you come out four to five bucks a head, um, just on your chemical saving there. So, um, 
and it also means that you don't have you know uh, a weed that's uh, sitting in the shed that's only going to be used two to five times a year unless you're a contractor. One last, oh, hang on, here's one. Um, I'm just wondering about cost. So can you do this with the entry level drones? And I guess what I'm asking there is I assume with the entry level drones you can't get across large areas of country. So I guess what I'm asking there is Where's the midpoint if growers are going to do this themselves? Hmm. What sort of dollars do they have to spend to get something to get across big areas and still do this? Yeah, listen, there's, there's a drone and a drone company that I know of um, that probably for about $10,000 you're going to get a platform that's going to allow you to do um, 500 hectares yourself a day um, at those really small resolutions, so getting your smaller weeds. Um, so it, it's going to be about that ten dollars to $15,000. I'm just waiting for them to release the pricing on that. Um, but the, the company that's behind it literally builds um, the, the, the Red Bull racing planes that you might have seen. So these guys are top of the food chain aeronautical engineers um, and they're looking to basically deploy them in Australia. So th that's the system that I'd say, but I'm just waiting on pricing, but it's going to be around that 10 to 15,000 Australian dollars. Sounds like a rapidly developing site. Sorry. Oh, using this technology in crop? The answer is we don't have anything commercial yet. So yes, but not, it's not ready for you. But, um, but we are able to, to do that. There was some marshmallows in, um, in wheat, for example. Um, those types of things we, we can definitely do. So some of the work that we've been doing with Harissia cactus is for, for pasture environments. So it's obviously a lot more col uh, complicated compared to your row cropping or, or just cropping in general. Um, so yeah, we're definitely looking at that space and that's one of the things that we're working with Microsoft on, so yeah. Certainly it's rapidly developing, so how quickly it changes. That's right, that's right. Thanks, Joe. Can everyone just join me? Thank you, Joe.